Now this is another concept where somebody would like to correlate soil suction with conductivity measurements or in other words you have seen that uh, it is very difficult to measure soil suction and to develop soil water characteristic curves. So then the question comes in mind by indirectly can we measure suction and if we can measure the suction then we can complete the SWCC or the soil water characteristic curve. So this is where we were working in this direction to show that if you measure the electrical conductivity of the soil mass or the porous media, you can easily obtain its suction value. And uh, this paper has recently been accepted by ASC, it has not come in the print yet by Dr. Anuman Rao. The basic philosophy here is that uh, metric suction of the soil is a function of volumetric moisture content. So this is nothing but your you know classical SWCC, the relationship between metric suction and volumetric moisture content. At the same time, we have seen that sigma is a function of theta, is it not? So conductivity is also a function of volumetric moisture content. This is generalized Archie's law. So if you mix these two together, when we say psi m is a function of theta and function of theta is psi a sigma, what it ends with is that psi m is a function of sigma. So what it indicates is I can measure suction of the soil if I can measure its conductivity. So this was in short the thesis of Hanuman Rao and uh, he has published and uh, quite extensively in different journals by using this philosophy. So this is the classical SWCC curve where you are plotting volumetric moisture content with respect to suction. So you get some experimental data point and these experimental data points are fitted by using a standard fits which are available in literature. Fx corresponds to Friedland and Zing, Brooks and Corey, these are the scientists or the researchers who have given the equations for the best fits, Van Gennection, Vg and Moulin and Mu. So by using different fitting functions, you can obtain the soil water characteristic curve even if you have a little bit of data point. For all these points, you can find out what is the regression coefficient and the best regression coefficient can be used as the most suitable as the blue CC. Now look at this situation. By following this law, that is psi m is a function of theta and sigma is a function of theta. If you plot sigma with respect to psi m, what you get is the nature of the relationship which again is equivalent to SWCC. But we should appreciate a point here that measuring conductivity is much more easy as compared to measuring suction of the soil. So it is very easy as well as a very rapid method to determine SWCC. So if you go through the if you go through the works published by Anvantra, which will take some more time, maybe six eight months, then you will notice that we have shown that how these philosophies are working perfectly in order. Now, based on the complete impedance analysis, based on the complete impedance analysis, uh, some equations can be derived. Vinil, the question you asked in the previous lecture, now this is the starting point of the answer to your question about the multiphase material properties and how to determine them if you know the dielectric constant. There are several equations which are available in literature which correlate K is a dielectric constant of the porous media with its volumetric moisture content. So you can see it easily that under root of k is this term under root of, of the entire term. That means k is nothing but some coefficients multiplied by theta value. Now this is the famous Topps equation. If you know theta, you know the dielectric constant. You can calibrate a mineral and when mineral comes in contact with water. How you are going to use this in real life is 
if you know the k value you can measure the k value and you can determine theta and this is how the tdr or fdr probes work so this is where you are measuring k value and you get the value of volumetric moisture content the second equation is given by roth et al which again is a function of volumetric moisture content theta and the porosity so this is a mapping of two phenomena one is the matrix of the soil porosity and the volumetric moisture content theta all right this was given by roth the third equation was given by u et al where the dielectric constant is a function of volumetric moisture content of the soil mass then some efforts have been made to correlate dielectric constant with rho d rho d is nothing but dry density of the soil mass now this equation was further refined by my student rohini where the philosophy was that it's difficult to measure the dry density of the soil mass is it not the way you measure it is you know the total volume which you measure physically and weigh the sample get the moisture content and say total uh, total unit weight divided by 1 plus w is the gamma d it's a very very non precise way of getting the gamma d rather if you use this concept of measurement of k and if you know theta very precisely which can be measured with the help of any advanced instrumentation what you will end up is with knowing the value of rho d so that will be a very accurate measurement and this philosophy was proposed by gardner at all in 1998 so this was the contribution of rohini who published this paper in methodology of determination of electrical properties of soils in journal of testing and evaluation astm and we extended this relationship for determining the in situ dry density of the soil mass the reason is theta can always be correlated with w and gamma d that is theta equal to moisture content gravimetric multiplied by gamma d divided by gamma w all right so gamma d upon gamma w will be a non dimensional term multiplied by gravimetric moisture content and that will be the value of theta so if you know the dielectric constant of the soil system or a porous media you can obtain its dry density very easily all these equations are valid for single phase minerals assume to be all right but when you talk about the multi phase minerals then what happens i think this is what your question was binil if i remember correctly so this is where we talk about the mixing models so certain weightage is given to certain weightage is given to each mineral <coughs> of known dielectric constant so i'll come back to this equation slightly later if you know the phases of the minerals which are present in the soils defined as m1 and m2 so these are the composition let's say 80% quartz 20% Uh, elite or whatever <coughs> so if you know the phases of the minerals which are present in the soil and if you know the dielectric constants of these minerals that is km1 and km2 and if you know the dielectric constants of the pore fluids so this could be a situation dealing with only water then the pore fluid is only one it could be partially saturated soil then the pore solutions would be two air and water it could be soil contaminated with some organics so if you know the dielectric constant of the organics you have may have two or three phases of the liquid itself so one more term will come over here it becomes a three phase combination for dielectric constant determination eta is the porosity of the porous media and sr is the saturation of the porous media now the question is how would you find out dielectric constant of the minerals take the mineral in the purest form put it in impedance cell and you can measure its dielectric constant how would you find out the dielectric constant of the pore fluid extract the pore solution by using the pressure membrane extractor 
again put the solution in an impedance cell and measure its dielectric constant. M1 and M2, how would you find out? How would you find out the percentage of the minerals? Excellent. That is right. So, that is the reason why XRD analysis is so important. So, that you know what are the minerals which are present and then one is quantitative analysis for XRD. So, you can quantify the percentage of the mineral which is present in the soil. This is difficult to achieve and difficult to work on, very difficult. So, quantification of minerals which are present in the soil mass takes big amount of time. Porosity is a macro term which can be obtained very easily by any of the methods which you adopt and saturation can also be found out very easily. Now you look at this equation. So, the equivalent dielectric constant of a multiphase system would be, these are the equivalent terms that is under root of k of first mineral, under root of k of the second mineral multiplied by their mass phases or the percentages. This multiplied by 1 minus porosity. So, 1 minus porosity term will give you what is the solid phase of the material which is present in the matrix. When you multiply it by the porosity, this becomes the liquid phase, is it not? You agree or no? Vv upon capital V is the porosity term. So, volume of voids would be porosity multiplied by total volume. So, if you multiply the porosity with total volume, this is the volumetric form in terms of saturation of water. So, this is where your saturation term comes for the pore fluid 1 and pore fluid 2 and then this is nothing but the superimposition effect of pore fluid 1 on pore fluid 2. So, this is how you have created a two phase system. Now, if you are working with the minerals with the soil which has let us say multi phase of the minerals and multi phase of pore fluids, what will happen to this term? This term will get further expanded by taking into account K m 1, K m 2, K m 3 and so on. Similarly, K p f 1, K p f 2, K p f 3, K p f 4. So, you think of a system where you have a frozen soil which is contaminated, that is right. That is right. That means then what that is what I, I was telling you just now. If you think about a multi phase system of soil, what will happen to the saturation term? Right now, the way you have defined saturation is only volume of voids with respect to volume of solids. Now, your SR term it still will get fiber bifurcated. That means the saturation with respect to the vapor phase, the saturation with respect to the liquid phase. So, that means you will be having SR prime which will be equal to SR1 and 1 minus SR1. So, those terms get multiplied into this equation. I think this is what precisely he was asking in the previous lecture that how would you talk about the material inhomogeneity. I thought that this will be a good example to show to you that how equivalent models can be developed. And the state of the art is that most of the minerals are known for their dielectric constants, most of the pore fluids are known for their dielectric constants. So, if you use let us say remote sensing equipment or imagery, so what essentially you get is k value, is it not? How would you get k value by remote sensing device? You can transmit electromagnetic waves and then you can find out how much time they take to reflect from the surface and that time lag between the waves will give you the dielectric constant. So, once you know the dielectric constant k, you know the mineralogy of the entire soil and you can find out how much saturated the system is. So, depending upon this concept you can locate a reservoir which is full of water underground it will be a good source of fresh water supply or whether the water is a brine solution or brackish water or whether the pore solution happens to be a oil reserve or whether the, this soil mass happens to be having more crude oil or some soil contamination and so on. So, these type of 
models which are known as mixing models are utilized for ascertaining different compositions of the soils. This is a very big subject and a lot of people are still working. But this must give you an idea about how small small concepts can be put together to characterize the entire soil mass. All right. <coughs> Some efforts were done by one of my master's students, Azaz Bhatt and Anuman Rao in publishing this work which came up as generalized relationship for estimating dielectric constants of soils. This was also published in journal of ASTM international in 2007. Is this part clear or something else you are asking? That is right. So, here the saturation is it, it is with respect to the fluid 1 because that is why you are noticing here the moment you talk about the fluid 2 it becomes 1 minus SR. So, here the intention is let us say we are talking about partially saturated soil. So, still the saturation term is air saturation or water saturation. So, if you define SR as the saturation which is water saturation, then 1 minus SR is nothing but air saturation. So, KPF2 becomes the dielectric constant of air and KPF1 becomes dielectric constant of water. The perception changes the moment your profession or the requirements change. As a geotechnical engineer, we are more interested in water in the soil. But somebody is more interested in let us say oil rather than water. Another person would be more interested in vapors present in the soil rather than water or the liquid form and so on. A geologist will be more interested in no saturation but only minerals. So, for him everything is submerged in water let us say. So, he does not talk about any of these cases, but he is more interested in the values of the percentages of the minerals. So, that he can then ultimately what is that you are trying to do? If you have this type of model, you can match the left hand side value of k with the right hand side value of the parameter and see where you are going to converge and that type of model is going to describe whether this location is having a resource or not. So, that later on intense activities can be taken up. I suppose this is how the whole mining process or the identification of the minerals must be getting guided by your imagery, satellite imagery. You want to add something? Sangeeta? Okay, yeah. What happened? Fever. Okay, okay, please take rest. Yeah. But then reflectance will also depend upon the dielectric constant of the material, of the minerals. So, the basic concept has to be same. Another good application would be in GPR, whether your concrete is cracked or not or some micro fissures are there, micro cracks are there. So, what happens in the regular concrete phase, the moment cracks take place, then the air impregnates into the system and the dielectric constant of the air comes to the picture. So, this becomes a two phase system of concrete which is cracked and hence air is present in it. You can use this equation again for finding out the composition of uh, the composites which you are developing. Each phase will be having its own peculiar property. All right. Okay. Now, this is another in interesting relationship which shows how Etterbach limits change as a function of dielectric constant. 
So, for a given soil, if you contaminate it with different organic and inorganic materials, xylene, propylene, methanol, water, what you will notice is that the plasticity index does not change much, but with dielectric constant it will change a lot. However, you can find out easily that the soil is contaminated with what type of chemical if you talk about its liquid limit. So, most of the time we talk about liquid limit with water. For soils which are contaminated with methanol, other organic components, for them the liquid limits are going to be much more higher. The question is then how would you identify whether the soil is contaminated or not? Take the soil sample, check its electrical property, take out its pore solution. So, now you have divided in two parts, one is the pore solution characterization, another one is soil matrix characterization and then com follow complete analysis again and see what fraction of contamination was present in the soil mass. Is this part clear? So, then the question is that uh, what are the basic concepts of impedance spectroscopy and how to utilize the response spectra which you get for engineering application. The basic idea here is that what we are trying to do is we are trying to study the response of the material under alternating current. So, you apply any electrical stimulus on the material or a substrate, substrate is nothing but the pore solution and you try to get its response spectra. So, for that matter if any sinusoidal wave is passing through this of frequency f, the material or the substrate properties would be specific gravity in case of soils, volumetric moisture content, unit weight, void ratio and its saturation. So, we want to get the answers to all these parameters, we want to identify these parameters. So, what you are going to get is you are going to get response spectra in the form of impedance plot. What are the impedance plots? The real part of impedance would be z cos of phi, imaginary part of z would be z double prime modulus of z sin phi, where phi is the angle between the two components that is imaginary part and imaginary part and the real part of z. So, this is what basically you are trying to do. Now, using this phi parameter which is tan inverse of z double prime divided by z prime or the imaginary to real part, when you plot it with respect to the frequency, whatever pattern you get is known as a Bode's plot. So, we have talked about Nick's plot, this is another representation of the data which you get from impedance spectroscopy which is known as Bode plot, it is a relationship between phi angle and frequency. If you plot the results, wherever you get the minimum value of phi, alright. Now, this corresponds to the value of z double prime divided by z prime. But still most of the time people try to use or they stick to Nix plot rather than Bode plot. This is one of the ways of getting the information related to the material properties. So, this is where the concept of equivalent circuits comes into the picture. What you have done is you have taken a material, put it in impedance cell and then you try to develop the equivalent circuit. What is the meaning of equivalent circuit? You are trying to map the response of the materials in terms of its resistance, capacitance and inductance. And if you are working on soils, you ignore the component of inductance, you are only interested in considering resistive and capacitive part. So, this is basically fitting of the data which you get from the impedance analysis by using Z view software. 
So to start with, we always assume soil mass or a porous media to be consisting of a resistance and capacitor in parallel. Saturday. Yes, please. So, for this circuit, when you are starting with, you have some R1 and C1 values. Whatever impedance data you get, it is plotted as a red line. And this portion, you remember, is electrode polarization followed by the main part of the circuit. So, this is where if you superimpose the response of RC parallel circuit, you will end up with this type of a semicircle. What is the meaning of this? This much is the total resistance of the circuit and by the time you come over here, the resistance is 0, the capacitive part is also 0. The maximum capacitance, capacitive resistance would be somewhere here which corresponds to this value. So, what is your feeling? Is this a good match of the phenomena which is happening in the soil mass or not? No, because your equivalent circuit could not capture the real response of the material. The real response is far away from the theoretical response which you have assumed to be a simple R and C circuit. Now, in the process what you get is from this graph you can easily measure what is the value of R and what is the value of C1. So, you know the value of R1 and you know the value of C1. So, you are not happy with this. What we should do is we should refine this further. So, if you refine it further, you have to try so many combinations. So, starting with this circuit, what you should do is, what is your feeling when there will be a good match, when this green circle shifts on the left hand side or right hand side? Your right hand side, my right hand side also. So, if shifts on the right hand side, then at least this circle, green circle will be embracing the red one. So, what we should do? We should translate the green circle on the x axis. How to do that? By adding a resistance. So, you have picked it up now. So, you add a resistance over here to this circuit. What happens? You end up getting this circle shifted on the right hand side. But are you happy with this circle? because this circle is still not capturing the entire response of the material. What we should do now? We should slightly spread the diameter of the green circle. How this will be done? For the initial circuit, you have added a resistance, you add more capacitive part to this. So, the moment you do that, what happens to the response? Now, this response is very much close to the real response of the material. You can see there is almost a near overlap between the green circle and the red circle. But still you are not happy, let us say. So, what I should do? Add another circuit like this and then this is a trial and error and comes by more and more practice and intuition sometimes. So, you take two R and C circuits, put them in resistance in series and what you will notice is the discrepancy is almost disappear. But to refine the results further, what you can do is, you can go on with another compartment of RC circuit and what you will notice is, this is a perfect match of the results. And the best possible fit which you get is, when you adopt a circuit like this. Now, this is where a philosophy is. If you remember, in yesterday's discussion, I was showing you that the impedance cell contains two electrodes and the soil mass in between. 
So, unless you give due weightage to the electrode and the soil mass contact. So, this circuit of RNC basically depicts the contact between the electrode and the soil mass. So, this is one electrode, this is another electrode and in between the soil is represented by this. I have omitted lot of steps in between. This was achieved after at least 3 months of everyday trial and maybe we tried more than 5-600 circuits. This was done by Azaz, my MTech student. So, we simply cut short all the steps in between and you can see this is just like building blocks. So, you keep on playing with the circuit and one fine day it may result a, in a good fit and that is the fit which has been shown over here. So, here the R square values are perfect, very close to unity and physically also this circuit seems to be a good circuit where you are giving enough weightage to the electrodes and you are giving enough weightage to the soil mass which is encapsulated between the electrodes. So, this became the standard circuits for the impedances which are being used for analysis of electrical properties of the soil. So, as our contribution is he has made impedance cell, he has derived a methodology to get these type of components and he has come up with a generalized circuit which represents the response of the material. Now, the question is how we are going to use this response in geotechnical engineering. Is this part clear? What are we page? This has been achieved by people like you only. <laughs> now, you find it trivial or interesting, no? So, now I will be talking about further interpretation of the components of the circuits. Is the basic philosophy clear? The basic philosophy is that we are trying to capture the response of a geomaterial by conducting some tests in the laboratory using an impedance analysis. And then each component of the circuit should be giving you some information about the material. Now, if you plot the values of the different components in the circuit, if I define it as the resistance and if I plot resistance with respect to volumetric moisture content, what you will notice is as the moisture content increases, the resistance drops is perfectly all right. I will have to go once again back to this figure. In yesterday's class, we were talking about grain to grain contact. If you put two grains together, it is a sort of a capacitor formation with some fluid in between. You look at the circuit over here, this is the depiction of grain to grain contact. The resistance offered by this system is associated in the form of R4. The resistance offered by the pore fluid is nothing but this resistance. Clear? So, the issue is, it is a sort of a philosophy by which you are trying to study what context between the grains is causing in physical sense. The contact between the fluid and the grain, alright, is a sort of a grain boundary effect. So, if you plot these type of relationships and if you show RGB, RGB is nothing but the resistance of grain boundary and RG the resistance offered by the grain itself. These are two things, different things. One is the resistance offered by the grain boundaries, another one is the resistance offered by the macro system, the grain itself. And if you put them together to get the total resistance of the circuit then what happens to the total resistance of the circuit? This is what people would like to identify. So, the message which you get from this analysis is, you can characterize the soil as a granular material if RGB is negligible. What is the significance of this? If in this figure, 
the value of R4 becomes very, very small. So, this shows a set random material. If R4 is very appreciable, it is going to be a fine grain material. Is this clear? It is basically a philosophy being put in practice to show yes, there is an analogy and this analogy captures a real phenomenon in the form of some equivalent models. For these soils, RG value will be very, very high. So, if you train a circuit and if you get the components of the circuit and if you find that RG is extremely high, it is understood that this material is going to be a coarse grain material, R grains. Fine grain materials will show you very, very less resistance because of the surface charge. So, the soil can be characterized as a fine grain soil if both RGB and RG are present in the equivalent circuits, but their values are less. However, values of these resistance should be quite low as compared to the granular soils. So, the basic idea of giving this information to you is just by looking at the values of the components which are appearing in the circuit, you can identify whether the circuit belongs to a fine grain material or a coarse grain material. One step ahead of this would be to ascertain where whether the pore field is contaminated or not. That means, the circuit components corresponding to R3, you know, which is or R2, which is shunting this process if value of R2 is very, very small, most of the current will be passing through the pore solution. But if R2 is very high, it becomes a dry soil. Clear? So, based on R2 value, you can find out the saturation state of the material. So, ultimately, what was the whole idea? The whole idea was to characterize the soil mass or the porous media. And when you say characterization, the basic attributes were grains, how they are located, what type of pore fluid is present, what is the density of the system and so on. So, the efforts are on in this direction to you know master this subject in such a way that you just take one measurement of the soil and then you analyze the results and you should be able to diagnose what this material is. Clear? Any questions here? Of course, this work is not still complete. We are working in this direction fully. One day this part should be in a position to be handed over to the, you know, professionals. But I am sure that you must have got some idea about what are the applications of impedance spectroscopy and why people are working in this area and ultimately what do they achieve out of it. <laughs>